네, 미국 시카고의 선물 거래소와 월가의 현지 소식을 생생하게 들어보는 시간입니다. 월가 트레이더 버디의 진짜 미국 주식 순서인데요. 어, 재무 컨설턴트로 있는 버니 씨와 화상 연결해서 미국 시장에 대한 생생한 이야기 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 자, 어떻게 지금 한국 투자자들에게 추천했던 종목들 이어지고 있는지 그 내용까지 함께 살펴보시죠. To update the stocks that we've talked about over the last six months, what we want to do is we want to continue to monitor the health of those stocks. Those stocks have been significant growth stocks, whether we talk about Google, whether we talk about Apple, whether we talk about Bill.com, whether we talk about uh, Zscaler, all the stocks that we've talked about are all growth stocks. Many of the growth stocks, just like we've talked about in this period, have declined substantially because of the expectations that higher interest rates may have on future growth. But what that can do is that can give you buy opportunities for stocks that are very, very cheap. And we'll talk about one of those in this uh, sequence when we go through all the stocks. I always want to do this because to me this is like a report card for the market because we can look at indexes all the time and we can say the Nasdaq went from here to here but it's the individual stocks that we own and the stocks that we want to own that are outperforming the Nasdaq that's the thing that we really want to look at because that's where the great returns are the stock market can give you 9% a year but when you're buying stocks that are outperforming the NASDAQ, you're getting 30, 40, 50, 100, 200% in a year. Those are the stocks we want to take a look at. When we looked at Bill.com, that went from 115, I think to 175, all the way up to 400, and then back again, uh, it retraced a significant amount. We want to be able to capture returns on stocks that are going to grow, that the market's going to realize that the revenues are going to grow much faster than they thought about because they're in a really great situation and they're in a really great sector of the economy that's a growth sector. That's the kind of thing that we want to think about. So let's just quickly go through the stocks that we have right here that we've looked at so far over the last six months. In Bill.com, we can see when we looked at it here and it rallied, it outperformed the market. Now, since the end of November, it has substantially underperformed the market. But what we want to do is own stocks that are, high, that are moving up, not moving down. Let's try the next one. Microsoft. Microsoft has continued to outperform the market only for the brief portion of the first two weeks of this month has Microsoft underperformed. And then it had an earnings number that was good and the market's back up. So it's still in a positive environment. Let's flip the next. Amazon. Amazon has underperformed the market all the way through 2021. Still a great stock, still has so much to do, Amazon Web Services, but we want to identify conditions where we can outperform that stock. That stock will outperform the NASDAQ, and it has not done that yet. Next stock. Upstart, another great outperformer, and then since the early to mid part of November has underperformed. Um, one of the stocks that we want to keep an eye on. Still, next one. DocuSign, great outperformer earlier on in 2020 during the COVID epidemic and since September has underperformed the market. And we want to keep an eye on that. We don't want, we don't want to be in these stocks when they're underperforming the market. We want to move the portfolio around because if you're going to be invested in stocks in the long run, you're either going to have to accept the volatility or identify conditions where you're in a high growth stock and that stock starts to underperform. If it outperforms, it can stay outperforming for an extended period of time. It's kind of part of the reason you have to do homework all the time to be able to monitor the stocks in my portfolio. Next one. Netflix, okay, this is classic. Okay, so we had a decline right here. We talked about Netflix 
doing better at $515, and Netflix did do better. It got up to $700. When it rolled down earlier in uh, end of November, early December, it continued to collapse. This was about $600. So you were able to capture something, not that much, but you would have avoided the problem. Now let's go on one more to, net, to Netflix, the next chart. Interesting here, Bill Ackerman runs a hedge fund. It's a $13 billion hedge fund. It's called Pershing Square. Bill Ackerman is one of the uh, best performing hedge funds in the country, year in, year out, decade in, decade out. Uh, they've done a tremendous job. And what Ackerman did, uh, he just bought Netflix this week and he purchased three and a half million shares. Three and a half million shares at, let's call it, $350 is about $1.2 billion worth of stock that he has now in his portfolio of a hedge fund that has a $13 billion uh, total a assets under management. Um, when we look at Netflix, and we talked about this right here, this is the chart we just looked at, okay, where we compare Netflix to the NASDAQ composite. And we found that period where we outperformed, we outperformed, we got up to $700 almost, then we started to underperform at $600, and that stock has gone down. Down here, down here, Ackerman has accumulated this. And if we look at it, $350 is almost halfway back on that stock. So Ackerman believes that Netflix still has great fundamentals. He loves this, the revenues of the stock. He, and he believes that the revenue is going to grow significantly going forward. He loves the management of Netflix. Um, and if you bought Netflix, you could have bought it and made a return. Let's pretend you bought it at the initial public offering and it went up to $700. You would have returned over 500 times your money on that. But you would have suffered significant price declines just like we're seeing right now. So to be able to capture a stock and have it go up 500 times versus your original investment or 300 times or 100 times or 50 or 25, you're going to have to accept volatility. Netflix was one of the great performers in this whole last, say, seven years, eight years, and not all stocks are like that. But there will be some stocks, and we will trip over some of these stocks. Hopefully, that'll be the Netflix, because we're constantly monitoring stocks that outperform the NASDAQ, and they're in growth sectors where we anticipate revenues to grow faster than everybody else thinks. Let's go to the next one. So just like I said, in summary, Netflix had its best rally in a year between August and November. But the stock failed to outperform around $600. The stock has retreated down to 50% level. And now we're starting to see astute investors start to accumulate stocks down there. Let's try the next chart. IDEX. So this stock, great outperformer over time, has underperformed since late September. The next stock. Chewy. Chewy basically has had a really poor year this year, uh, underperformed the whole time. Revenues continue to grow, income's okay, income's matching expectations that the analysts have, but the stock's not outperforming the NASDAQ. During this period, the stock rallied because the NASDAQ went higher, but it didn't outperform. Let's go to the next one. AMN, uh, stock basically has outperformed Almost through the whole period of time, we had one kind of very, very difficult week, and we've chopped around, um, and we're back below, monitoring to see if we can get that stock above. Next one. Fiverr, same thing. Tremendous move up, and then nothing. So we're continuing to monitor Fiverr. 
네, 이렇게 여러 가지 종목들에 대한 이야기를 나눠봤습니다. 시청자분들 많은 도움 되셨으면 바라겠고요. 또 버니의 미국 주식이라고 샵 0082번으로 문자 보내주시면 더 많은 정보들 이용하실 수 있게 저희가 노란톡으로 안내 도와드리도록 하겠습니다.